during the second week of December, LMU has released a pretty big update, version 1.2, and there's a whole suite of changes. I'm not a fan of Paul Ricard, so I'll skip on that circuit, but there's plenty of other things to have fun with, unless you're caught up with the anti-cheat. I mean, listen, there's nothing inherently wrong with easy anti-cheat, but there's a problem when it comes to the Open XR Toolkit. It's flagged by the anti-cheat and blocked. You can't use it and its features. As of December 19th, um, the developer has acknowledged, yes, they are working with Epic to try and fix this, but for now it doesn't work and it's one of the tools I use for benchmarking. It is possible to run LMU without the anti-cheat by creating a shortcut and adding dash VR to the target and running it in offline mode. But that technique did not work for me with Radeon. I'm benchmarking today with the Pimax Crystal Light, which means I have an alternative option. I can uh, use it with Steam VR and use FPS VR to collect that, uh, stats and do some data analysis. The benchmark scenario we're focused on today is SPA, as you can see, uh, with 20 GTE cars, sunny day, and I'm just benchmarking the first lap as usual because it's, it's the most challenging. It's when the cars are most clumped up together. The benchmark also includes the fast rolling start, which is about a minute of just approaching the start finish line. The graphic settings that I'm using, they're very similar to what I've used previously and we're drawing all of the cars. I'm running the Pimax Crystal at a very modest 0.58 resolution in the Play software. That's a per eye resolution of 2500 by 2960. That is the same resolution as using a Quest 3 with virtual desktop at the Ultra preset. This works out to about 15 million pixels and I went with this because I wanted something that was competitive for all the graphics cards we're testing today. Because we're focused on the GPU, I'm using my fastest CPU, which is the 9800X3D on an MSI X870 board. Check out the description for the rest of the specs and where you can buy it. Using a RTX 5080, I tested the MSAA levels and also compared to FXAA. You should always go with at least two times, but there is an advantage of reducing shimmering with four times MSAA. When testing at 90 Hertz, we want all of our frame times to be to the left of the 90 Hertz line, which is at 11.1 milliseconds. By going from two times to four times, we actually see a shift to the right, so a loss of performance of about 0.5 milliseconds. As the resolution increases, or if you decrease the GPU ability with a slower architecture, then the impact of that jump could be more significant. Speaking of older hardware, I wanted to see uh, what does this mean, this whole this texture streaming feature that has been added into this new build. Does this affect VRAM or system RAM? So I tested VRAM using a 3060 Ti 8 gigabyte. Once again, we're gonna look at the frame time chart, this time for the CPU, uh, showing how much time the CPU spent at each uh, specific frame time over the course of this you know, three minute benchmark. Any data to the right of the 90 Hertz line is late therefore uh, less than 90 FPS and potentially causing stutters in the headset. This data seems pretty much identical, so let's switch over to the GPU frame time. Uh, yeah, so all of the frame times are late from the 3060 Ti and texture streaming does not seem to help here. This scenario and resolution is simply too much for the 3060 Ti and it is overwhelmed. If any of you have noticed an improvement with texture streaming, uh, post your system specs and the scenario that you tested with, the resolution, or if it's with screens or whatever. I, I'm, I'm curious to know. Now let's change gears and look at the fastest cards I got. Up first is the CPU frame time distribution, which is a bit interesting. I mean, this is a graphics card test. Why are we looking at this? Well, we do this just to see if there's some kind of outlier. And there are a couple data points for the 5070 Ti that are outliers and you can ignore them. I have to alt tab to end the benchmark run and sometimes I'm not fast enough and I capture that. But we do see an interesting trend and that is that both Radeon cards, the 7900 XTX and the 9070 XT have worse CPU frame times reported by FPS VR. It's not much, but it clearly stands out from all other GeForce cards I tested. So now let's look at the average FPS, and I've been running these uh, benchmarks at 90 Hertz, so ideally we want 90 FPS. Over the course of this four minute benchmark, all of these cards are delivering 90 FPS or just there. 
But this is misleading because we're not actually getting perfect performance from all of these cards. I've added in GPU on time delivery. How many frames by the graphics card were delivered on time for that 90 Hertz requirement? For example, the 9070 XT is at 99.5% on time, which means at 0.5% of the time, it had late frames. These would be stutters in the headset or might even trigger motion smoothing if you had that enabled. The 7900 XTX was at 99.9, .9, so if it had a stutter and you blinked, you would have missed it. And the 3080 Ti is at 99% on time delivery. So let's now go and look at the average GPU frame time. This gets us a little closer to the truth because it's no longer about pass fail for 90 FPS. We're actually looking at what was the average frame time? How quickly could the GPU actually produce a frame in this LMU benchmark? Now we can actually see the performance stepping between the, the different GeForce cards and how Radeon fits into it all. In my opinion, the best bang for buck GeForce is the regular 5070 12 gigabyte. Unfortunately, I don't have one for testing, but I would expect it to be between these two watermarks. And guess what? It's cheaper than these Radeon alternatives as well. And I've got some affiliate links below to Amazon if you're interested in upgrading to a current gen mid-range card. This chart is easy to look at and a good reference, but it's not going to have the granularity. It can't show us where the late frames are. We know that the 9070 XT was late and the 3080 Ti, but we need a different approach. That's where these nice histogram charts, these frame time charts are so powerful. Here we are looking at the GPU frame time distribution for all of these cards. And this chart style lets us clearly identify where those late frames are, where they trail past that 90 Hertz line. On the other side of the chart, it should be unsurprising to see the pink 5090 lead the way. Next to it is the RTX 5080, which is pretty close to being able to deliver 120 Hertz performance in this benchmark scenario. Just note that having a higher Hertz means you need a fast CPU because a lot is going on. The 5070 Ti has a good showing for 90 Hertz performance with the vast majority of its frames um, well, well to the left of that 90 Hertz line. But it's a different kind of struggle for Radeon and we actually visually see that difference with the 7900 XTX. Both it and the 9070 XT have this like double hump going on with their frame time distribution. You know, I can't recall seeing such a stark difference between Radeon and GeForce when it comes to how the GPU distribution looks. Yes, both cards are delivering almost on time performance, but not comfortably so. As far as I know, LMU is not deploying some kind of fancy feature that only supports GeForce cards like we see with iRacing. So I, I, I can't tell you what's going on here, but what I can do is show a side-by-side -side comparison between the 5070 Ti and the 9070 XT to see if, can we spot it real time? So LMU really likes to run full screen. In order to capture the FPS VR window, I had to do a separate monitor. And on the benchmarked uh, system, I had to run two monitors and then use OBS to capture that FPS VR window. No, this is not how I captured the previous results. That's just what I had to do to get these uh, two comparisons. All right, so let's point out a few things. First of all, as we can see the FPS and the GPU frame time uh, clearly, and then we can see the frame pacing, I guess I'll call this. And immediately here in just the fast rolling start, we can see that the 9070 XT is up against it. Yellow frames are technically late according to the software documentation, but not late enough to trigger a motion smooth or a dropped frame. So I consider it okay, but an indicator that we have no headroom. Another stark difference between these two cards is that Radeon is always using more VRAM. And not by a little, that's 30% more VRAM consumption. Yes, it's, it's within the capacity range of these cards, but it's kind of crazy that the Radeon is consuming that much more and is burdened by having to move that much more data to complete the same VR experience. We can also see that system RAM is 18% higher on the Radeon uh, configuration compared to the GeForce. What I really like about doing this kind of side-by-side -side comparison is what we just went through right there, that was the hump. That was the farther to the right, closer to being late hump of having all, all the cars close together, going by the grandstands, all the buildings on the pit straight. That's where the Radeon weakness is. 
as we approach Lacombe and we go all the way down through Pujan, we're going to see that the Radeon actually is gaining more headroom here, whereas the GeForce, it seems more stable, more consistent, and we saw that in the frame time distribution. Now, I'm going to admit I am completely ignorant to developing a simulator and graphics engine and VR. I don't know, guys. I have no idea, but as far as I can tell, it seems pretty obvious looking at this. The Radeon has to carry more assets in system RAM and VRAM. Interacting with the RAM always costs performance. Therefore, it is worse than GeForce. That's all I can measure, and that's what seems to be happening. I, I, I'm almost sure it's more complicated than that, but from the outside looking in, it's what I see. Another thing uh, some of you may have noticed already is the GPU utilization, where it's pegged always at 100% for the 9070 XT, but we're in the high 60s to low 70% with the 5070 Ti. I have done no additional tuning with these cards. Everything is running at basically default. And with manual tuning, it might be possible to push the 5070 Ti harder, increase its utilization, but this is representing the out of the box experience that you would have if you bought one off the shelf. And as we head down the back straight and towards the chicane, we're going to see again, the Radeon uh, produce more of those yellow frames, its frame time overall increasing and at risk to having some late frames. So if we're looking to improve things for Radeon, what, what options do we have? Well, they are limited because we don't have OpenXR Toolkit or the modified version that lets us crop the image, lets us reduce the vertical height of the VR image and save performance. Within Pimax Play, we can adjust the FOV, unfortunately only in a simple way by making it narrow, which for some racing makes no sense or we can try and deploy some type of image scaling. With Radeon, we would go with FSR, and there are some presets here, but you can manipulate both the resolution and the sharpness. For example, with the 9070 XT, the 9800X3D processor, I tried out FSR quality, which reduces the resolution by a lot. Yes, it's great to have this performance gain, but in the headset, it was ugly. The better approach is to increase the overall resolution in Pimax Play and then apply FSR. And, and that's what we see in purple. Normally this 0.75 or medium preset for Pimax Play would have a much higher resolution with the Pimax Crystal Light. But applying 1.3 FSR in the software has trimmed out our resolution to be almost identical to the default that I have been benchmarking all along. But check out the histogram distribution. That second hump is gone. The distribution of frame times looks way better, more like a GeForce card. We don't have nearly as many frames at the danger line, 11.1 milliseconds. Yes, we do have a few outliers, but I think it's safe to ignore them, especially because this was just a one-time benchmark run. So I'm not sure if this just instantly disproves my theory about the VRAM and system RAM being an obstacle for Radeon because here it is, FSR quality with 0.75 overall uh, Pimax play resolution, but because of that image scaling, we've reduced it back down. On this gameplay capture run, uh, it <laughs> doesn't seem like the 9070XT was actually as happy. Um, you can see that the FPS is lower, but I'm not reading too much into that. Uh, because I'm, I would not normally do this, you know, running two monitors and an OBS capture on the benchmark machine. Uh, regardless, the frame time pacing does look much better when uh, applying FSR quality. And uh, unfortunately, I also have to report that using FSR with Radeon definitely caused in-headset stuttering, without a doubt. I especially noticed with the cars, I noticed it with the environment, I don't think it shows up very well here with the monitor capture, or at all, quite frankly, but it is definitely a problem and I just can't recommend it. So actually watch ahead, the AI are so crazy at LMU, they just sent it three wide through Eau Rouge. Just mental. Yeah, uh, anyway. All of today's testing has been with a Pimax Crystal Light. I think it's the best bang for buck headset in their lineup and probably the best bang for buck headset out there that has a wire. If you're interested in battling these yahoos offline, like AI or online, like human, uh, but be sure to check out the affiliate links I have beneath and support my channel. Or maybe you're interested in benchmarking, in which case be a, become a Patreon paying subscriber. Join the clan. I have a cool website and within it, we can 
look at uh, different benchmarks. I've just added in LMU, uh, and we can see here <laughs> me clicking through this right now, and uh, it's pretty fun. It's an option for you to upload your own results and then do a direct comparison to some of mine. I'm um, just kind of randomly selecting things here. And it's pretty neat. I mean, you just select things, it populates, you can see the frame times, you can see notes about the resolutions and the frame time charts, which is all pretty cool. So if you're into this stuff, uh, it's the place to be. So check that out at patreon.com benchmark odysseys.